Hello, my name is Tony Botting, and I'm a simulation specialist at Go Engineer. This is a two-part tutorial covering a simple pendulum analysis in SolidWorks Motion. Items that will be illustrated include Simple Pendulum 1, Assembly Considerations for Use as a Motion Model, Set Up in the Motion Interface, and Graphing of Results. In Simple Pendulum 2, we'll do more graphing of results, investigate changing unit systems, exporting data, and changing the results fidelity. Here we have a pendulum for which we know the simplified equations of motion as long as the bob is much heavier than the connecting rod. We used a six pound steel weight for the bob and we made the rod out of a very lightweight material. The block is a fixed component and we installed some steel fasteners from Toolbox. Just to review, until mates are added, each body can translate along three axes and rotate around three axes. So there are six degrees of freedom for each body. As you can see in this assembly, it only has one degree of freedom. Namely, a group of items can rotate about an axis. SolidWorks Motion needs to figure out the total number of degrees of freedom in the mechanism in order to formulate the physics equations. It does this by examining the mates and internally creating entities it calls joints. More on joints in other videos, but for now it's prudent to review the mates to check they are actually necessary and they make sense in the context of the mechanism. Here are two examples. It makes sense to start the assembly with fixed components like this block, because it is naturally fixed in place relative to the rest of the assembly. You probably know the first part installed in the assembly gets fixed, as seen by the little f in the tree. SolidWorks Motion will likewise treat this part as fixed or grounded. Since there are no mates to evaluate to ground, SolidWorks Motion will automatically remove all six degrees of freedom from this part. Simple enough. Another example is fasteners. Sometimes installed fasteners might be able to rotate like this. It is a good idea to mate something like a radial plane of the fastener to a plane of the attached component, which naturally ties it to the block. If the fastener is not tied down to the block, SolidWorks Motion will discover an extra degree of freedom that it would have to solve, which would complicate the analysis. We have also set an angle mate between the assembly vertical plane and the mid-plane of the pendulum subassembly. This mate can be independently suppressed in SolidWorks Motion to allow movement. This mate can help in two ways. Number one, it stabilizes the assembly while mating connecting parts to the subassembly, such as the fasteners. And number two, it sets the initial conditions for the motion analysis. In this case, we set the angle to 10 degrees from the vertical. So much for mates and joints. I'll create a new motion study. The first thing you'll see is the type is set for animation. We want full motion, so I will set it accordingly. And I'll resize the setup window. We do want to check the angle mate between the pendulum and the assembly vertical plane. SolidWorks Motion allows independent suppression, so I'll do that. Okay, now let's put in a gravity field. And I'll click the green apple here. You can see the arrow showing it's pointing along the z-axis. I'll change it to point vertically downward. This is pretty much done for setup. Notice the analysis default runtime is for five seconds. So I'll go ahead and run the analysis by clicking on the calculate button. Let's look at some results. I'll click on results and plots the displacement category, angular displacement, magnitude. I'll select the bob and plot against time. You can see it's alternating between minus 10 and plus 10 degrees. There is a red colored vertical index bar that shows the current position and you can drag that bar in the motion pane. We'll check the pendulum system frequency and you can see it completes one cycle in about 1.4 seconds. For oscillation angles less than about 10 degrees, a hand estimate for the system frequency is the square root of g divided by the pendulum length, l. We get about 0.7 hertz, which has a cycle period of about 1.4 seconds. So this agrees well with the motion simulation. See the next video, Simple Pendulum 2, for more on graphing results, changing unit systems, exporting data, and changing results fidelity.